Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll talk about gestation trophoblastic disease. We know that we have two types of GTD. It's either benign or malignant. And our focus in this video will be the benign type, hydatiform or molar pregnancy. And in specific, we will focus about the pathogenesis. So what is the pathology and cytogenetic underlying hydatiform pregnancy or molar pregnancy? First, we know that we have two types of molar pregnancy. It's either complete mole or incomplete mole. And to make it easy, I will take you into three stages. First, fertilization, next placenta, and lastly, cytogenetic. First, fertilization. Normally, the sperm carries 32 chromosomes and the ovum carries 32 chromosomes as well. And we call it haploid. But what happened in GTD, and as always, it's that fault, is this. In complete mole, you end up with 46 chromosomes. But how? The ovum is empty, doesn't have any genetic material, and this ovum gets fertilized by either two sperms, 32 chromosomes in each, or in most common cases, one sperm with 46 chromosomes. On the other hand, the incomplete mole gives an end result of 69 chromosomes. And how did they end up with 69? That they have this complete ovum that carries its own genetic material, 32 chromosomes, getting fertilized by most commonly two sperm, 32 chromosomes in each, or one sperm with a 46 chromosome. The next stage is the placenta. We know the trophoplastic layer of the placenta that has its own villi. First thing that we can see under the microscope is an edematous villus, and we see also trophoplastic proliferation. And here's a summary slide to compare both complete and incomplete mole. We said complete, you're getting an empty ovum fertilizing by either two sperm or most commonly, one sperm with 46 chromosomes. The key word is that complete mole end up with 46 chromosomes diploid. And usually the common, uh, most common uh, six gene is an XX, 46 XX. On the other hand, incomplete, you have in a normal ovum fertilized most commonly by two sperms or one sperm giving a 69 chromosomes triploid. And the most common sex gene carried here is XXY. The other thing we said uh, that we're having an empty ovum in the complete mole. So you don't actually have the presence of fetal tissue in the complete mole. And this is very important because when you do an ultrasound, you will not detect any heart sound or heart movement. In the incomplete mole, you get the presence of fetal tissue, however. The, the other thing is, under microscope, we said the edematous villi and the trophoplastic proliferation. And just to make it simple, in the complete mole, you get a complete edematous villi and a complete proliferation, or diffuse. And in the incomplete mole, you're having incomplete uh, edematous villi and incomplete proliferation, or focal. And in both moles, we have high HCG, because we know that the source of HCG is this in situ trophoplast. Just keep in mind that incomplete mole is going to be very, very high. And here's a picture showing you under the microscope. You can see on the left side an edematous villi, and on the left side a trophoplastic proliferation. Now lastly is the cytogenetic. We have this P57 that we can detect by doing immunohistochemistry. This P57 is a product of paternally imprinted and maternally expressed gene. And we know what does this mean. And just to make it simple, if you can recall, we said that in, com in the complete mole, we have an empty ovum, which means that we don't have a maternal gene to be expressed. That is why if you want to detect the P57 in a complete mole, it's going to be absent. However, in the incomplete mole, yes, you can detect it since the ovum carries a maternal gene. 